I hope you guys have enjoyed this series uh, so far. If you haven't, you really need to go back because, you know, Misty and I, sincerely, as we've gone through this series, we've been so, so prayerful that you guys would really, um, that you would hear from God regarding this, this year and that, that He would give you a clear focus, not just on what He wants you to do, but who He wants you to be. That's right. And um, so... I hope you'll go back. If you haven't listened to these messages, go back and listen to them because they really, really will. They'll help you. Um, the first week, we, we learned from Nehemiah. And we learned, you know, God dropped this big God-sized goal in Nehemiah's lap. And it was to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Huge task. And, but here's how Nehemiah responded. He evaluated, he assessed, not just that situation, but, but the, really the bigger picture of it all. I think he also assessed and evaluated his own life and his role and where God had him in that season in his life. And so that's what we've been doing these last four weeks is just evaluating. And then also he fasted and he prayed. And he said, God, I'm going to set aside time. I'm going to make myself, I'm going to bring myself to a a position of complete discomfort so that my flesh can kind of just move on out of the way. So it's not about me and what I want uh, for my life, but it's what you want for my life, and I can begin to hear clearly. And so we've challenged you to do that. We've been fasting and praying. We've been evaluating. And then we learned from Paul, the Apostle Paul, and he had a great word for us, and he broke it down in these these three things, and we kind of put it into layman's terms, but we talked about lightening your load. When you're running the race this year, when you wanna, if you want to run with endurance and you want to run fast, but you don't want to like totally and completely poop out before the end of the finish line. You <laughs> have you have to you have to to lighten your load. You gotta make sure that, that you're that you're you've lightened yourself enough that you can you can go fast, but at the same time you gotta pace yourself so you don't die. We talked about in that message how the runners in that day wanted to lighten themselves so much they took everything I mean, off. Do you guys remember that? They, they ran, ran naked. without clothes on. All right. So naked. we're not we're not actually encouraging you to do no. that, but we are saying they were so serious about it, all yeah. right? So get serious about lightning your load. I wish they would have had the technology and the commentators no. of that, that day because I'd love to go back and just watch. And and they're off. I don't wow, watch. okay. <laughs> yeah, look at that. All righty. I mean. <laughs> Maybe the commentators. <laughs> what do you say? I mean, <laughs> I, yeah. The third thing that we learned was narrow your focus. Right. Hone in on what it is that God has shown you for your life. For this year, hone in and narrow your focus. Don't don't get so don't get spread so thin yeah. that it all just falls apart. You need to know exactly what you're doing this year, and that only comes from evaluating, fasting, and praying. How so, many have ever found that when you try to narrow your focus, it's actually pretty hard? Have you ever seen it's that? It's very I hard. I mean, like honestly, we when we began in the beginning of January, really evaluating our own lives and the church, it was overwhelming. It, I mean, there's so many things that our hands are touching. It's like God, how do we narrow it down? What does that really look like? And for everybody, it's different. But I'm telling you, it's a challenge, and we keep reminding ourselves and keeping in front of us what did God show us? We were going to narrow. What is our focus? We keep it in front of us in our office. We keep it at our house. We are very clear, but I'm telling you, Laser sometimes focused. it is challenged to actually cut back. It's not easy. You think, you know, I, hey, drop a few things. That's awesome. It's actually way harder than you think. It's been very tough. But as, as a, you know, we not only have to do that as individuals uh, in our relationship with God um, and all areas of life, but we have to do it as, as an organization, as leaders, we have to look at, and if you're a business owner, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, if you lead any sort of group or organization or team, you have to kind of scoot back and look at the broader scope and say, okay, what do we need to do here? All right, what needs to happen? And so we've done that prayerfully. Uh, we've been fasting and praying with the church, right. the staff. What do we need to do this year that's going to help us to hone in on what God has for this church? And as we've been doing that, God spoke very clearly to us that we're to focus on, on two things, all right? We're to build a building, obviously, and we're to build people. Okay, so as we were praying about this, we're like, okay, God, what does that really, really mean? Well, Break the building, the building kind of speaks for itself. Um, you know, you go outside and it looks like a bomb has went off because there's like stuff happening all over the place and it's exciting. It is exciting. I have people. And if you're OCD like me, at first it was a struggle, okay? Because when things begin She's to happen and begin to change. crying, looking out the window. Look at all the rackets. Like the guys come in with the heavy equipment and they start moving dirt. And I'm like, can we not please pile Honey. it nice and neat all together? And the next thing I know, we got piles here and here yeah. and here. And I'm about to have a meltdown. And then I'm like, okay, this is a good thing. Like change is coming. It's a good thing. But sometimes it's hard because change things get really messy. Change is messy. It's messy. Every time I go outside, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> 
So it's good change. It's, it's a good thing. And somebody stopped me the other day and they said, Brad, what on earth is going on over there? I'm like, it's out of control. I'm like, I know. We gotta it is that. out of control. What, you know, but honestly, let me, I got to share this real quick. Listen, when you, when you keep God first and when you honor him, this is, this is the principle of the tithe. Or this, it works. I'm telling you. When you return to God what belongs to him and you make him first, as a church, we've, God put this on our heart years ago to take out a tenth Get of back. the income that comes in, the tithe that comes in every month, and send it out in a way that does not impact this church at all. So this church has been tithing. And as we've done that, God has blessed mm -hmm. this church. Like, Amen. He has blessed this church over and over and over. And the word says that when you do that, when you return the tithe to God in obedience, here's what happens. He opens the windows of heaven for you. And he pours out for you blessings, so blessing. listen, that you are unable to contain, parentheses, manage. It's out of control. It's out of control. That's right. Like when you look out there, the reason everything's so chaotic and crazy <laughs> is because his blessings are so huge. Yeah. It can't even be managed. Yeah. God is good. Yeah. He has blessed this church. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah. God's good. So this year, so here, here's what this looks like. We're going to build a building. Our goal, just to let you know, is um, we're going to push really hard. In September, it's going to be our 12-year anniversary as a church, all right? Mount Mover's birthday, 12 years, all right? We would love to be in that new worship center early September. Uh, may not be done with the entire project because we still have to get in here. And we yeah, have the to goal would be to be in that to building. To be in that but, building and be able to just celebrate yeah. the church's birthday. Because once That's, we move in there, the project that will happen in here of a remodel um, will happen next, right. and you guys will get to walk right through the construction the change site. Like, the it'll progress. be awesome, all right? It's going to be it's good. Gonna, it's but the goal be is to be in there it's by to be in that room. One. So we're pushing hard, just so you know, uh, we're pushing hard to be in that room by early September so we can celebrate Mount Mover's birthday at 12 years. So while that's happening at the same time, we see, we're, when, when we open the doors to this building, the church is going to have room enough to, to grow three times larger than we are now. Mm -hmm. Right now, on average, between in-house and those of you, uh, Mount Movers family watching online, there's about 200, 250 of them watching online. So every Sunday, we're ministering to about 700 people. Yeah. So when we open up those doors, we're going to be able to minister to over 2,000 people like that. So here's what has to happen. Infrastructure. We have to start bringing alignment to the infrastructure of this organization right. so that we're in the right position, have the alignment that we need to watch right. it unfold and watch it happen. We can't wait till we get there and start making all these changes. We have to gradually start prepping uh, ourselves to be ready right. when we open the door. So over Here's this, a little example. Can I jump in for a second? Please do. The, when we decided, I interrupt you all the time, know, so I, interrupt me. I just decided it's my birthday. I can interrupt you. It is her birthday. Too. That's right. And I'm losing my Who wants again. to know how old she is? Uh, I will be taking bribes at yes. the door after church. I'll tell you how old she is. If you think I'm 29, you are really, really close. You're okay. close. <laughs> kind of. So when we decided to start doing baptisms in the house, we used to always do them at the lake, right? When we yep. had one service, we loved it. We would go to the lake. And then when we went to two services, we did the baptism in between. And then when we went to three, it was like, this is nuts. We cannot like be going back and forth. Right. So we decided we have to baptize in this room. Well, when we decided to do that, we talked about, okay, we're going to put a tank on this stage, but this stage wasn't built to have a tank with thousands of gallons of water on it. It wasn't built to sustain that kind of weight. So what did we do? But we went to Rick Collins and we said, Rick, Rick we got we to gotta do something to beef up this anything. stage, right? Beef up the stage, He's man. like, how do we get under there? We're like, there's a crawl there's hole, a hole in the back and it's about I this big. I said, you think big. your butt can fit through that? He's like, I can try. I can do it. <laughs> so Rick goes underneath there and he takes these boards and he begins to build a new infrastructure, if you will, a foundation upon which we could bring in the tank for the baptism so that when we dumped you we all didn't go through the floor right that wasn't what you would have been cool. wanted. <laughs> but that's the same thing that we have to do sometimes you get to a point in your life and it's like hey what we have the foundation we have right now will get us this far but if we're going to go this far if we're going to grow even more we're going to have to realign we're going to have to change a few things and that's where we are right now and with the process of change here's what happens okay this is the the cycle of growth whether it's your life or a business or an organization, here's what it is. It is this. Change has to happen in order for you to grow. When change happens, conflict happens. 
Why does conflict happen? Because we love the idea of change, but we don't actually like change, okay? Don't, don't tell me you love change. I say, I used to always say, I love change. But then when the dirt piles get everywhere, she doesn't like change. I'm all of a sudden like, I do not like this. She doesn't like Can it. we not flatten the dirt out before the next Sunday service so everything's beautiful? In between, we'll do the work. They're like, no, you're crazy, Misty. I'm like, Ugh. we don't like change. But there's change, there's conflict, and then there's, there's growth. growth. And if you can work your way through the conflict when, when things are kind of messy, really uncomfortable, that process, really, really painful and uncomfortable is a good thing because change is about to happen. And here's, here's a perfect example Growth. if you're coming to this church. There's already changes that are happening. Now, maybe you know and maybe you don't know. Things have changed with Kid Connect. Things have changed when you first come in with the move. There's lots of little bitty changes that are happening, and we're trying to do it in a way that is not like, you know, <laughs> complete shock and everybody's freaked out. What's going on around here? But but at the same time, down. we want to help you to understand that as we prepare for the growth that's about to happen, you're going to notice some things that change. And when it affects you, don't be the one to push back against it. All right? Today, we're going to be talking about how Nehemiah was faced with these people who just wanted to push back against the change that was coming. But listen, in order to have the growth, there's got to be the change. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, we've never done it like that before. No, we haven't, <laughs> but we've never had 1,200 people on campus before either, have we now? That's right. But we're going to. And so in order to do that, we had to change the parking lot. It got real uncomfortable for about a good month, did that it not? Was you yes. know what I'm saying? But now we got guys out there in 14 degrees Boom. parking you, and they have no problem in their coveralls they are awesome. parking your cars. Why? Why? Because we are preparing for the growth. growth. Change, conflict, growth. Get ready. That was really good. That was good. Go, babe. Dog gone. Thank you for that. Part three. Last week, we talked about building a, a foundation. If you know anything about building at all, I don't know much, but I do know this. You have to have a solid foundation. Yes. If you're going to build anything, you've got to start with the foundation. It's really the most important thing. And so last week, we talked about five habits that will change everything. Change everything everything right. for you this year. So as you're, as you're narrowing the focus, as you're lightening your load, as you're evaluating fasting and praying, as you're doing all these things, you got to run this year on a solid foundation so that God can add these things to your life, but put first right. things first. So those five things, I'll just rattle them off to you real quick. Habit number one was grow daily. We talked about uh, getting in the word of God. We talked about fasting and prayer. We talked about your relationship with him. Habit number two, connect weekly. We talked about um, life groups and the worship experience on the weekends. We Habit three, we talked about giving back. Giving back to God a tenth of our increase because we position ourselves for God to bring provision and protection into our lives. Habit right. number four, we talked about serving selflessly, which is volunteering your time and your talents and your resources. And then habit five, we talked about sharing contagiously your hope, your church, and your story. And you guys are rocking it at being contagious. That's why That's right. this room is full. That's right. All right. Well, today we're in part four. It is the finale. And today we're going to talk about fighting. Who likes to fight? <laughs> Come on. Okay. You're not raising your hands, but listen, I know that if I was in your car with you this morning, some you of you know how to you. fight, okay? You know you did. You fight with your spouse. You fight with your kids. Some of you guys... Your kids are like, Dad, why don't you cuss at church like you do at home? Oh. <laughs> kids tell it all, don't they? We think Ooh. that we like to fight, but you know what? Really, today, we're not talking about how to fight with one another. We're talking about how to fight against what happens in our life when we decide to change some things. What happens when we begin to narrow the focus in our life? We have to fight against opposition and distractions, all right? Sometimes it's people who are coming into our life and they're honestly trying to help, but they're not really helping. Other people, it's because they're critical and they're coming against you, but either way, you're going to have to learn if you're going to accomplish whatever God has laid on your heart this year. Right. For some of you, it, I've seen so many people setting up Bible plans, man, and I'm like, Rocking you... It can awesome. do it, all right? My kids are like, Mom, we're trying to read the Bible in one year. Do you know it's like five chapters a day? I'm like, baby, it's 15 minutes. It takes 15 like, minutes. Like 15 you minutes. Do Don't you have 15 minutes any time Put on your big girl pants and do it like That's a That's right. Do and I'm, you know when I see the check marks, because if you're set up on version, yeah. you can friend each other, and I see my kids' check marks go off, Gives I'm like, rush. yes. Awesome. Yes, because those are awesome habits you're establishing in your life. Whatever it is you're trying to do, man, I want to get healthy. You're going to the gym. You may die on that treadmill. Walk. I don't care. Get your buddy in there. If that's yep. your goal this year, don't give up, all right? Fight against the opposition that says, stay in bed today. I'll go tomorrow. No, you won't. 
Stay in bed two days, you're done. You're yeah. wasting your money. Cancel your membership. You know do what it. I'm saying? Cancel it. All right. I'm not do it. Nehemiah, chapter four. This is where we're going today. Nehemiah faced the opposition. He faced the distractions. We're going to learn what he did right here. Here we go. First one. Sanballat was very angry when he learned that they were rebuilding the wall. He flew into a rage and he began mocking the Jews. Man, when you decide what you're going to do and you begin to narrow your focus, there are going to be people who come against you. They're going to mock you just like this guy. He said in front of his friends and the the Sumerian army officers, what does this bunch of poor, feeble Jews think they are doing? Remember, these guys had been captives. That's why he called them poor, okay? They had been captives. They didn't have much when they came back. He said, do they actually think they can make something of stones from a rubbish heap? And a charred one at that because the walls have been burned down, okay? So imagine a bunch of rocks that are just piled up and they're charred because they've been burned. So what he was seeing is what was physically there. What they were seeing is what God was telling them was possible, okay? See the difference? They were seeing with their eyes. Sandal was saying, are you kidding me? That is a heap of rocks. There's nothing you're going to be able to do with it. And they were saying, no, 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 no. I see what God has already shown me in my mind, and that is we are able to rebuild this wall. He goes on and he says this, Tobiah the Amorite was standing beside him and he remarked, that stone wall would collapse if even a fox walked along the top of it. Listen, when you go back and you look at verse 3, it says this, do they actually think they can blank? Fill it in for yourself. When we came to Grove, Oklahoma, we sold everything we had and we bought a mobile home in cash. That was a drug house, okay? And we began to like remodel that nasty thing and we were like seeing in our mind the possibilities. What God had showed us was possible. And God opens a door to not what our dream church was, but just a building, just this little farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. Do you know we had people, tons of people, who begin to come against us and kind of say, you guys are crazy. Do you really think you can plant a church in the middle of nowhere? I mean, what town are you in? Are you in Wyandotte? Are you in Grove? We are don't you in really Denver? know. We don't sure. know. We don't know, but that's the door. Where we God are. Open. And actually, we pushed so hard to get a Grove address. Like, I could tell you the story, but it's for another day. It's funny. We got it. We have a Grove address. But we're right on the line. Like, honestly, if we were just, like, five foot over, we'd be a Wyandotte address, Okay. We wanted to be a Grove church because Brad and I God wanted a Grove. church on the lake. God said Grove. But God didn't give us a church on the lake. He gave us a house on the lake. He gave us a church right here. Here's the thing. People were pushing against us, and they said, guys, you guys are so talented. Cray-cray. You guys are amazing. Not but so. here's what you need to do. Wait, wait, I'm talking about two different people. Cray cray. Okay. Not so. That's us. <laughs> we're crazy. I'm saying they were telling <laughs> us, go to a bigger town. Yeah. Take everything you want to do. You have an urban vision. This is what they told us. You have an urban vision. Get out of rural America, go to the city, and you guys are going to blow up. You're going you're gonna to go big. We were like, we don't feel like that's what we're supposed to do. It's not what God said. So even when people were trying to help us, now then there were the other people who were like, you guys are crazy. You need to get real jobs. <clears throat> okay? Do you know you have four babies that following was my you around? That was my family. It's the truth. What are you doing? Like, you can't possibly make enough money pastoring a church. You can't make enough money watching other people's kids because we had a daycare, right? They're like, you have four babies yourself. Come on, where's the vision? And we're like, we have a vision. We know what God showed us. But then what people could see is just a little farmhouse in the middle of nowhere when what we were focused on is what God was showing us, hundreds of people being impacted. And you know what? Every Sunday we'd step up on that little platform. And I mean like. <laughs> that stage is that tall. It's still back. Like this should. would be the platform. And these three rows, you were the church, right? Oh, sure. Here, okay. Maybe shorter. even smaller. And we would not see the 10 people there or the 30 people there. I mean, we were so excited when we hit 32 one day. We were like, score. <laughs> we broke the 30s. You know what I'm saying? 32. We weren't seeing that. All we were watching is lives being changed. They said yes to Jesus today. They said yes to Jesus today. They said yes to Jesus today. I don't care what house we're in. I don't care if we're in a tent or under a tree. We are doing what God told us to do no matter what anybody else says. That's what Nehemiah did. He said, look, I don't care. If you don't think those charred rocks are going to rebuild a wall, God said, rebuild the wall. We're going to rebuild the wall. Here's what he did. As people started pushing against him, you go on to the next verse, and it says, Then he prayed, Hear us, O God, for we are being mocked. Guys, when people come against you and they say, You really think you can do that? I mean, come on. You've been addicted for 20 years. You think you could drop that bad habit? What are you thinking? Just don't even try. The reason they're saying that is because they know that they couldn't do it. So they don't want you to do it. People don't like other people being successful if they aren't driven themselves. 
You see, you've got to just realize that, hey, when people are opposing me, I just need to get on my face. And I need to make sure that God refreshes the vision again. Because when you get on your face and you begin to pray, God brings the why back big. It's not about a building. It's about people. It's not about the furnishings. We have these nasty metal chairs we paid a buck for, all right? One dollar a piece. Brad and I had $50 in our bank account. Somebody offered to sell us these chairs for $50. Like, we and have $50. 50. And I'm like, let's buy them. Oh, we have 50 bucks. I mean, we I think there's bucks. like 55. Let's He's do like, it. I'm not kidding. Well, you throw in the five. You think I'm kidding. Make it 50. <laughs> I'm like, a dollar a piece, we can afford this. And we started that church with these little metal chairs. They were which cozy. At this point, have all made mm. it to the... De- oh, no, no, no. We donated them, didn't we, to another church plant. Yeah. We blessed somebody else, and then we threw the others away. The sound system. Because we couldn't afford anything else. But you know what? It didn't matter. You've got to keep your focus on what God said, mm-hmm. not what you see. It's not always going to look beautiful in the beginning. Change, clump, and growth. It's going to be kind of messy, all right? Hold on. Can you, I don't think you meant to say that, but that was really good. And if you're taking notes, you should write that down. Don't focus on what, focus on what God said, not, not what, what you see. see. Focus right. on what God said, not what you see. That's, That's really right. good. That's what we had to do over and over. I don't think they're taking notes. So I don't know. My daughter was, first service, she said, Mom, <laughs> you gave me point one and point two. You never explained it clearly. So I'll make oh. sure you get point two very clear, okay? Yes, opposition distractions but she didn't catch it in the beginning all right when you come up against opposition guys you really have two choices fight or flight you can either say i am not giving up with tenacity i am not giving up no matter how hard it gets i am going to keep doing what god told me to do man i'm going to get healthy if i have to stink and do the same thing every day if i have to kill myself in the gym being humiliated because i can only run for two minutes and i'm dying who cares Tomorrow Do you'll it. get a little bit better, and the next day you'll get a little bit better. Don't give one percent better every day. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't fly. Don't flee away. Galatians six and nine says this: Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. You got to be relentless. Whatever God has spoken to you, whatever you need to do for your family this year, whatever you need to do in your personal walk this year, whatever that focus is, maybe some of you guys are like, we're getting out of debt. And I mean yesterday. Beans and rice, baby. Dave Ramsey all the way. That's what we're doing. If that's your focus, then you know what? Get the whole family together. Make it fun. Get a game plan and focus in. Put it somewhere in your house and keep it up in front of you. We're going to read the Bible every day. We're going to pray together as a couple. Get it in front of you and don't quit even when there's opposition that's right point two well thank you honey i just want to make sure they get it that was very great point two are you already taking notes fight against distractions right you know success attracts opposition yes success attracts critics and so constantly you're gonna have these two opposing forces anytime that you step out to do something great for god anytime you step out to attack a god-sized goal that he's laid in your lap the enemy is going to come against you and people they might even, and you, t- you touched on this, right. but, but even, even people who mean well, they want to help you, They want to help you, but they're going to come against you, yeah. all right? So you're, you're always going to have the enemy, and you're going to have people that are trying to peel you away from keeping your focus on what God has told you to do. And so I want to encourage you today to realize that the distractions are going to come, but you have to be like Nehemiah, and you have to be really, really good at opposing those distractions. Um, in in uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, it's, it talks about Sanballat and his boys. How would you like the name Sanballat, by the way? That's, that's a very interesting name, Sanballat. His mom ought to be slapped. All right, so, <laughs> so Sanballat and his boys, all their enemies, it says they found out that, that, um, that he had finished rebuilding the wall and, there, and no gaps remained. And so Sanballat sends these letters. And he says, hey, I want you, Nehemiah, to come on down and I want to talk to you. Basically, what he was trying to do is he was trying to distract him. He was trying to get him to get away from the wall because he knew if that wall was built... Mm-hmm that it would mean really, really big trouble for the entire territory because he knew that Israel would be made successful by God's hand, and he was right. right. And so the enemy was really on him to to come down and get away from the wall. But listen listen to how Nehemiah responded. He says uh, he didn't even get down off the wall. From where he was working, he sent a letter through a messenger, and he said, I am engaged in a great work, so I can't come. That's right. I'm engaged in a great work. So I can't come. When's the last time you just told the enemy, I'm sorry, devil. I am engaged in a great work that God has set me to do. I can't give you any attention right now. 
right. And you might have loved ones, family members that are peeling you away. You said, I'm going to start going to church. And they start mocking you. Yeah. It's like, well, are you kidding me? Right? You're like, look, you don't need to be hateful, but be like, hey, you know, look, this is something, this is something that I'm doing. God's going to do something great in my life. And I've right. got to focus on who he wants me to be. And I have to start right. serving him. You ought to come with me. Here's an invite card. You need to come and join <laughs> me at Mountain Movers. Right. God's doing great things, right? Mm-hmm. I don't have time right. to negotiate with terrorists right, right now. Right. God is trying to do something great in right. my Amen. life. And so Amen. I'm not going to not give to up. Right. I'm not going to lose hope. I'm going to laser right. focus on what God said I want you to do. That's right. And so focus and just eliminate those Good. distractions. You have to. Amen. 1 Corinthians 7 and 35 says this. And this I say for your own profit. Not that I, am, not that I may put a leash on you, but for, for what it is proper, and that you may serve the Lord without distraction. Ready? distraction. God's commissioned us to do the work that he's called us to do, to be the people he's called us to be without distraction. That's right. Focus. Focus. Be relentless. Be a pit bull in your determination. Be stubborn for the right things. Lock in and don't give up. That's right. Don't negotiate with yourself. Don't negotiate with the enemy. Don't get distracted. Keep working. And if you have to, work with one hand and fight with the other. But do whatever you have to do to be the person God's called you to be and to do what he's called you to do. To be who you're supposed to be and do what you're supposed to do. Let's pray today. Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, I pray over this congregation, God, over these people, these families, God that as you've laid these God-sized goals in their laps of who you want them to be and what you want them to do, God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would help us, Lord, to just evaluate, assess the situation, to be people of fasting and prayer. Help us, God. We know that we're gonna, there's things that we're going to have to give up if we want to go up. God, help us to lighten our load. Help us to set a pace for ourselves so we don't die. Help us to narrow our focus. Help us, Lord, to run on a foundation that's so solid because of the habits, God, that it takes to be who you've called us to be as we put things first. And God, today, Lord, I pray that you would just birth this in our heart as we conclude this series, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to eliminate distractions as we run this race, as we focus this year on having our best year yet. We love you, God. Bless this church. Bless these people, God, for pursuing great, godly things with heads bowed and eyes closed you might be in this place and you know the most important decision you can make for this year if you haven't done it yet is to enter into a real and life-changing relationship with jesus that's contagious and and there's nothing that i want more for you than that than to know him in a real and contagious way that you would give your life to him fully that you would make heaven your home And so I just want to encourage you today, if you're in this house or you're watching online, I would encourage you to do as I did many years ago. Admit that you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins. It doesn't make you perfect, but it puts you in perfect positioning to begin growing in Him. You need Him and you need His church. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Confess Him as Lord of your life and just make the decision today that you're going to live for Him and never be the same again. It's a daily journey and we want to do it with you. So with heads bowed, eyes closed, if that's you, if you're watching online, would you make that decision today? Would you say yes to Christ? If you're in here, would you just raise your hand? I'm not going to call you forward. I'm not going to ask you to come up front. I just want to pray with you right where you are. We want to pray with you as a church. If you're watching online, I want you just to type in the comments section, I'm all in. Amen? I see your hand over here, ma'am. Anybody else? I see your hand. I see your hand. Anybody else today? Anybody else today? I see your hand. Anybody else? Father God. And just if you're watching online, type, I'm all in. So we just want to pray together. And church, let's pray in support of those that have made this decision. Father, I love you. Father, I love you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. He's the answer to my problem. He's the answer to my problem. I confess Him as Lord of my life. I confess Him as Lord of my life. Help me to change, God. Help me to change, God. Help me to live for you. Help me to live for you. According to your word. 
according to your in word. Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 Hey, if you just made that decision, man, it is the best decision you will ever make in That's your right. life. And we have a gift for you. It's called your Next Step Kit. It's in a green bag as you exit on the left. And if you're online, just message us your address. We'll send and it And we to will you. send it to you first thing in the morning. Yeah. But guys, it has a brand new Bible and a message from Brad and I on what your next steps are. Because guys, honestly, we want to see you succeed most of all about everything else at living for Jesus. All right, will you put your hands together for those who just made that decision? Hey, thanks for joining us today. We sincerely hope the message impacted your life. Stay connected with us by following us online or you can find us on Facebook. If you would like to partner with us financially, we have a few easy ways to give. You can text your giving to 77977 and simply type in MMC and follow the prompts. Or you could find us online at www.mountainmoverschurch.org and click the Give Now tab. Or you could simply mail your giving in to 24000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. We are a church leading people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ that is contagious. We look forward to seeing you next week.